G'day there everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how you can charge a capacitor to surprisingly high voltages using a dual thief circuit. This works with many different coils, although it does help to have a much longer winding co connected to the collector of your transistor. I've got about 170 turns on the collector side on this one and about 17 turns on the base side. Now I'm using two batteries to get slightly higher voltage here, they are a bit flat though so in series we're getting just under 2.4 volts out of them before we hook anything up. Now, all I've done with this collector, there's no LED or anything connected to this jewel thief. I'll just disconnect one side of the capacitor for a moment when I start it up. Um, all I've done is I've connected one side of this capacitor to my collector and the other side of the capacitor has a little transistor that I pulled out of a TV. I don't know exactly what value it is but it says TVR4J on there and I have the anode hooked up to the capacitor and I'm going to be putting the cathode to, it works on both the base and the emitter of the transistor I'm going to be doing it to the base to try and take advantage of the negative spikes as well so let's fire up and see what we get, we've got up to 2.4 volts in our battery there Now, if you look closely at this scope, if I can get it out without crashing everything, now that probe is set on the 10 times range, and as you can see, my yellow line is set to 10 volts of division. So where it says 30 volts there, it's actually 300. This scope is a little bit optimistic. We don't really have quite that much, but it'll go pretty close. We've dropped our battery voltage down quite a bit in doing that. We're drawing over 100 milliamps. Oh, now I have this capacitor also hooked up to this multimeter here, which is set on a 1000 volts DC range. So let's just start charging, shall we? It's a microwave capacitor, so it can definitely handle the charge. There we go. And you can see it growing its charge on the scope here and slowly gaining on the multimeter. There we go. We're getting 250 volts from a little bit over 2 volts in our battery. I think that's pretty special. Doesn't take long either. I've also charged up large value capacitors. This is only one microfarad, this big microwave capacitor. It's very high voltage though. It goes up to 2100 volts. I've also charged up this one. 400 volt, 270 microfarad. It does take quite a lot longer to charge, so that's why I didn't show that in the video. Um, using two AA's I have seen up around 280 volts. So I just thought that was pretty cool and I'll do a quick video to show you. The important thing to making it work is that you need a very long coil on your collector and a fairly short coil on your base. If you swap it around you get big huge negative spikes but it's nowhere near in the same magnitude. You might see 70 or 80 volts negative there and maybe 10 or 20 volts positive. When you put the collector on the really long side you get these huge big spikes got to be useful for something. I'm thinking maybe driving a pulse motor or something off of it. Also worth noting, you don't have to charge just a capacity, you can charge a battery. I've also done that. Um, and in that case, I was able to charge a battery that had 0.95 of a volt in it from a battery that had 0.11 of a volt. By the time I'd finished charging, my supply battery was down 2.7 of a volt and my charge battery was up to 1.3 of a volt. So you can charge a flat battery off an even flatter one. But I think it does help if your supply battery has a higher voltage at the start of the charging. Anyway, something interesting for you all to play around with. I'll be playing around with it a bit more myself over the next few weeks. Thank you for watching.